Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Hey everybody, we've got a great one today. We're gonna go deep on some detailed lead generation and sales funnel strategies today. Aaron's gonna talk about his bodily metamorphosis. We're gonna talk about Tom Brady's <laughs> second retirement. <laughs> we had a lot of cool stuff to talk about, but I know uh, from the title how we cracked 200 leads in about five days, 200 plus leads in about five days with a new funnel we're gonna show you. Mm -hmm. um, I think will be really instructive and a real detailed deep dive into the kind of work that we do on a regular basis, not only with ourselves and our own companies, uh, but with clients. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. But where do I want to begin? Um, geez, first and foremost, I love Tommy. In fact, I got my two by. This is my TB12. There you go. My TB12 amino acids I'm plugging away with in the morning. People people ask, like, what, what you're always drinking something. I get this a lot, Aaron, like when, when I speak to people that watch the show a lot. What are you always drinking? Well, usually it's essential amino acids. And sometimes I'm drinking like this kava type greens type drink where it, where it like makes me more alert. And it's really good for talking and speaking and really staying present. But today it's, it's amino acids and uh, in... Uh, in celebration of Tommy's second retirement. Hey, is third time's a charm? Do you think maybe he comes back and does it a third, to third time's a charm? I mean, it's possible, but um, I got to tell you, I was surprised, Aaron. I, I think we got to separate the the Tom Brady pre last year and the Tom Brady last year. Like the guy himself? The, the, the um, Like where he's at mentally? I don't know if I want to go down the guy himself rabbit hole. I'm really more talking about the player. So it, it goes without saying that Tom Brady, I, I, I don't know if you could even make an argument against it, is the greatest player of all time. Um, his teammates will tell you he's amazing to play with. Other than that one lunatic that uh, walked off the field with his shirt off and waving the flag, who lived with Brady, by the way. who but, is but the, And that by. wasn't even about Tom. That was just about that guy's mental issues. He has some some issues, right? Yeah. That, and was, that was Antonio Brown, right? Antonio Brown, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, the the fact is, is he was intense. He was demanding, um, like the Jordans and the Tiger Woods and the LeBron James of the world, had high expectations, yep. um, held everybody to them, um, but 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 most of the time never put himself above the team, very team-oriented, um, greatest football player of all time, just signed. Greatest a competitor of all time, really, too, right? The greatest I think you could make that argument. Yeah. I, I, I think you could make that argument. One of, one uh, of. One up, one up, definitely. He's in he's in the Mount Rushmore, in my opinion. You look at the Jordans, oh, yeah. you look at the Tiger Woods, you look at maybe the Wayne Gretzky's. You know, like he's 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 on he's on Mount Rushmore, no right? Doubt. So, uh, just signed a three hundred million dollar deal with Fox to be Tom, a broadcaster. Yep, but biggest is he, broadcasting. Is he, is he doing it, Aaron? Though, is he actually going to be in the broadcasting business, or is it an offer that's on the table that he hasn't accepted yet? I believe it is signed, sealed, and delivered at three hundred million, the most lucrative broadcasting contract ever for a commentator. I'm wondering if he takes it though, because another side of me thinks that he, when he came out, the, the thing, and I love Tom, and but but I don't love the decision he made last year of retiring to spend more time with family, and then 41 days later not retiring, which is kind of a slap in the face to the family, and I think it might have cost him his marriage. And I think he's at the point right now where he's going, you know what? That might have been a bad judgment call. I'm so in love with the game that sometimes I can't even see straight. And I don't want to risk the the be, being on the road. This is this is a big time job. I mean, I played I played football in high school uh, with Matt Hasselbeck, as you know, and he's in that role right now where he's doing games, he's doing ESPN prime time in the morning. And that requires a lot of work during the week, a lot of study, a lot of interviews, a lot of traveling, a lot of being on the road, a lot of almost like you're preparing for a game, but you're preparing for multiple games. So I don't know that he goes back into the fire again in risk maybe not being able to spend the time with the family because he certainly doesn't le doesn't need the money. And I told you, Aaron, last week, I'm a big TB12 sports fan. I've used his TB12 method for many, many years now. 
and it's got me into the best shape of my life. And you know, I told you, I think last week, I'm in talks with TB12 Sports right now um, to potentially do some work with them here in Naples, Florida, where I live, which I'm excited about. In fact, I'm going up to meet the Tampa Bay team, I think in two weeks, just to see the complex, the facility, the method, the business model, the marketing behind it. But I think for Tom, what one of the guys told me is he's like really focused on the TB12 model and he wants to have these certified body coaches all over the country. Right now, they only have like 30. He wants thousands. So I feel like he, 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 he can do that and not have to commit so much time and definitely have time for the family. So I'm actually hoping he devotes the time to the TB12 sports model because I want to work with them, by the way, self-serving. Um, of course. Team. But more so because I think that that broadcasting thing is a real big commitment of time. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. And like like you kind of alluded to there, you got to separate, I think, the the pre-last year from the last year. I think last year was a bad decision. Um, I definitely think it cost him his marriage, he put some too. friction between him and his his wife and potentially even his kids. Yeah. Um, his team was not the same team. They did not perform well. He had his worst really statistical didn't. year ever. Oh, God. Um, eight, and, nine, and, and, eight and nine? I mean, you, seriously? Has he ever, ever been under 500? I don't even think ever. I don't think so. Um, and I think other than maybe his first year and, uh, and, and the cherry on the top was he lost to the Cowboys in his last game, which is just the extra, you know, why do you say that? Groin. Well, everybody likes to mock the Cowboys. So, you know, that's, that's always the, the extra kick in the groin is he'd never lost. Yeah, to the Cowboys. lost. Oh, cause he never lost to them before. Is never that, lost the I Cowboys. That. That I and that, that was his last game. Right. So I think if you could have gone back and hindsight being 2020, he would have stayed retired the first time, which is why I know he will stay retired. See, I time. was wrong, man. I actually said he's so he, – because I've studied him. I know, I know his mentality. Aren't, I actually thought it would be the opposite. I did too. I thought that he was going to go, you know what? Just lost my marriage. Um, I'm still playing at a high level. I'm going to do what I've always done. And I'm just going to go until you cart me off the damn field. 48, 47, 46, stretcher, like – you're, I'm not going until they yank me off the field. I thought he was going to play that route of like, I'm just going to prove everyone wrong and go till I can't even walk. Well, but here's the problem. He can't go back to the same team because the same team doesn't have the tools that he needs to win. Well, Gronk's, here was the gone. rumor, buddy. I don't know if we talked about this. Here, and we'll, we'll move on here soon, folks. We're, you know, when we're, we feel like it. <laughs> we, if, if you've watched the show for some time, we deviate <laughs> and we talk about some – we like to we, – listen, here's – the most instructive part about what we're talking about. We focus on high achievers and there's habits of higher achievers that we talk about because those habits can become our habits and we can be better at what it is that we do, running a business, running a sales organization, selling ourselves, right? And for Tom, there was a rumor because Josh McDaniels is in Las Vegas now. He's the head coach of the Raiders and Josh McDaniels was the offensive coordinator for Tom Brady for like 18 of those 17, 16 of those 20 years in New England, whatever it was, 20, I think, yeah. 21, 23, something like that. And there was talk that because Carr is gone, the quarterback, the high ticket quarterback, high franchise quarterback in Las Vegas, he's gone. So they're like, could we bring Tom Brady and Gronk in for like a one to two year deal and see if we can't make another run at it? That was floating around the internet. So I thought it, maybe, it definitely was. maybe. It definitely could, was that where it got shot down. Did you hear about is, that? I, I did hear about it. Okay. But but the problem is where it got shot down is the Raiders have the second worst offensive line on the planet, and you can't put an old, immobile Tom Brady behind that line. But they could shore and, that up in, a, in, in an offseason. Uh, I think that was the problem. I Maybe. think there was, there, that was the, you know, he, there was really nowhere for him to go that had the pieces that he, that he needs to yeah. be successful. Yeah, and he's, so, it's better off. <laughs> yeah, I think he's better off. Um, uh, moving forward, but got to pay homage to the greatest of all time. I mean, the amount of Super Bowl, I think he's been in 50% of the Super Bowls in the last 20 years or some nonsense number. It's a crazy number out of 23 seasons. I think he's appeared in, correct me if I'm wrong. I know they lost a bunch in New England, some really heartbreakers, three or so, but he won six with New England and one with Tampa. So seven, seven wins, I think nine or 10 appearances in a 23 year season is that will never Wild. be duplicated. I don't think that it will. will never be duplicated. And, so. and I think the key takeaway for you and I is that Tom has been hyper focused. Yes. He's been very diligent about taking care of his physical and mental state along the way, which most people are not. And um, he always 
had something to tap into to keep him fueled. I think for the majority of the time, it was the fact that he was the last pick and that really rubbed him the wrong way. And he used that as fuel to, to prove everybody wrong. You have to have something that fuels you daily to keep you going. He had that. Yep. Um, and he, and he was great at, um, involving a team. Yeah. He right. Was. He was a very team driven guy. I mean, even if you look at the salaries that he took over the last, I don't know, five or six years, he gave up an, an enormous amount of his salary back to the team so that they could put the right pieces around him. He didn't put himself above the team. You know, you look at him versus an Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers comes to Green Bay all the time and says, give me every penny you can and then complains that they don't win because they don't have enough money to buy any other players. Right. Mm. Tom Brady did the opposite which is why Tom Brady has seven championships and Aaron Rodgers has one. So, you know, a team guy, chemistry involving others, lots of things we can take away from this situation in our own lives as to why the greatest of all time just retired. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Really good stuff. Anyways, pivoting to you. Actually, you mentioned the drive of Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. People that say he can't do it, the haters, this. Great episode last week on how to deal with haters. If yeah, you missed last week's episode, we did a deep dive. We did a masterclass on how to deal with haters. I think this is episode 113. So that'd be 112 over at salesvelocitytv.com. Good one. Good one on how to deal with that mayhem that is inevitable as you climb up the success ladder. But hey, listen, congrats to you, man. You kicked off. We did a great episode to kick off 2023, whenever you may be watching this, on kind of getting your yourself in order from a personal, physical, mental day-to-day environmental productivity standpoint. And uh, you went on this 75-day, what do you call it? Well, the name of it is 75 Heart. Is 75 the name Heart. Of it is a mental strength challenge created by a very smart, very successful guy named Andy Frizzella. And a million people have gone through it already. It's free, no charge. Uh, he gives it away for free. It only has a few simple rules. You must follow a meal plan, whatever that meal plan is, is up to you. Uh, you must work out twice per day for 45 minutes. One of them has to be outside. You must drink uh, a gallon of water per day. Uh, must read 20 minutes of nonfiction per day. Must take a picture of yourself every day. Very simple rules. There are no cheat meals allowed whatsoever. And there is no alcohol allowed whatsoever in the program. Andrew, you you went you went muted on me. I sorry, hit the button. Have you stayed okay. true to that part? Here it is, February third on the cheat meal thing. Oh yeah, there's if you if you cheat and you're really playing the game to win, you're supposed to start over. So the penalty for oh, cheating is man is drastic. So you've had uh, no alcohol and no cheat meals. No alcohol, for no cheat exactly meals. Exactly, February third. I don't know, thirty five some odd days here. Yeah, never, never missed a gallon of water, taking a picture every day, one workout outside every day for 45 minutes, rain, rain or shine. Damn. Um, I've done everything exactly to the T. I started at 24% body fat, which I was surprised by. That's a little high uh, for you. It is a little high for me. I was clearly carrying it better than I thought as of, <laughs> as of Isn't today. That the way it goes? Well, I have, well, well, you know, well, at the end of it, we'll share the before and after picture maybe in our, in our Facebook group or something along those lines. But I, the before and after already are, insane amazing and uh, down from 24 percent body fat to 19 put on about 12 pounds of muscle in that time um down from 198 to 184 in my weight uh yeah feeling good feeling sharp and it and i think it came at a really good time because it's been a very challenging start to the year there's been a lot of weird little business issues and fires that i've had to deal with and i've been perfectly clear and um, strong and to be able to deal with those things. That's the, that's the thing when you don't pollute your body and when you get it in great shape and it's well hydrated and it's got the right nutrients in it and so on and so forth. It's so much easier to endure the challenges that come with being a business owner and, and they become the, the volume gets brought down on them because you're not fighting two battles, right? When you're fighting a battle with your physical and mental self, that's one battle raging here. And then there's another battle raging here. It's, it's, it's a two front war, right? Right here. I'm good. So I only have to focus over here right now, which makes it much easier. So I would highly encourage people to really look at their regimen right now 
and ask themselves if they're doing the right things. I'm not saying go do 75 hard. Maybe that's too extreme for you, but certainly has had a profound impact on, on my mental state over the last 30, 32 days. Well, listen to the point we make a lot on the show. We, we loop back to a lot of personal productivity and health and wellness type stuff, but only because it increases productivity and resilience mm -hmm. and it gives you the ability to deal better with the adversity that is inevitably going to come, which equals stress. And if your body's primed metabolically, it can handle stress better. Yep. It can handle yeah. virus better. It can handle sickness better. It can handle a common cold better. Like when you're b somewhat bulletproof and you've taken hyper good care of yourself, you don't get put down for long if you get put down at all. And, and, and where does that lead back to business? It leads back to, well, then I just get to be in the game, not lose a day here, a week here, a day here, a week here. That's lost money in most cases. So that's why this is so important to really zone in on is getting yourself physically, metabolically, mentally sound so that you're not missing days and missing the sale and missing appointments and missing opportunities. And it's clarity too, right? Because when your body's fit, your brain works better. So your clarity of thought is much better. Right. And, and creatively, you are much more impactful. So there's also the fact that you're just, it's the same system. So when it's operating at a higher level, you're just better. Yeah. You're just better mentally better. and physically. You sure are. No question about it. So let's talk about a real physically fit. Let's talk about this real physically fit ultrasound offer that we're going to dig yeah. into here today. Um, good little opening rant. Not rant. Yeah, I think good. that we talk a lot about philosophy on this call. We also talk a lot about tactics, but oftentimes the, the viewers and the listeners like to see visually – a little bit of what's working now, right? Some some of what we're putting together, what's working now for us. So we thought we'd take an opportunity to show you something that we've created. And the reason, let's talk about the reasons why we created it. So we sure. have Pipeline Pro, which is our software, which which powers the show. And we have had a, a front end offer, introductory offer of Pipeline Pro for three years that literally just brings in sales all day, every day, because we use the Pipeline Pro system and combine it with great marketing and it just predictably generates sales all day long. But we wanted to open up a different angle and approach potentially a different group of people. And we also wanted to build our email list, which we can do much better or much easier when we're giving away information for free than just attempting to sell the software. We get a much higher rate of people giving us some contact information. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put together a front end information funnel which led people to Pipeline Pro, which, you know, you have here for us today. Yeah, it, it's, uh, if you market online, now I want to preface this because I know a lot of our listeners, the internet marketing online thing is really still a mystery to most. It's really tough to crack the code of going online and generating cold leads. Most people are referral driven. Um, they're out networking, shaking hands, and they're, and they're getting business the old-fashioned way. But if you can figure out a way to get cold leads from the internet, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, yep. radio, TV, doesn't make a difference, Aaron, right? If you can figure out a way to crack the code to getting cold leads to convert, you can scale your business indefinitely. Ultimately, if you, when, when you get to a paid media place in your business, you start to be able to really take control and scale. Very few people yeah. are, are, can do that. They're very up and down. So we see this all day, every day. So we launched an information offer, which I'm going to show here. We'll, we'll share the screen. So if you're watching this, check it out on YouTube, go to salesvelocitytv.com where all the video lives if you're listening to this live, because I want to sh we're going to show you the funnel that we built. And the reason we're going to show you is because we didn't expect Something like this never happens out of the gates, I guess is my point. We didn't expect it to do 200 plus leads in the first seven days. Normally what happens when you launch um, a somewhat of a sophisticated funnel online where there's a lot of copywriting and graphic design and programming and free reports and things that need to be delivered and a lot of automation, it, it, it takes three, four, five iterations to really get it to convert. But we were like scratching our head going, man, this thing is just gangbusters converting. The numbers are staggering right out of the gates. And the whole media team is like, why are we not making any changes at all? Like we're not tweaking anything, which I've not seen in a long time. I'm not 
trying to brag, but at least we're going to be able to show you what have you can funnel hack us if you'd like. We're showing you what works so that you can go do it, right? You can go do something like this. This is really not as sophisticated as most webinar type funnels or free plus shipping funnels if you own a book and you're doing shipping. It's really a clean get a free report online, listen to an audio, which was me and Aaron on a recent sales velocity TV podcast show, which is interesting. And then what we did is we segued from there into, hey, now that you have this great information on how to sell more, we want to share with you the software that drives that strategy. So I'm going to walk through that and then we'll talk about some numbers. And I think this will just really, hopefully this will just get you thinking, yes, for my insurance business or yes, for my coaching business or yes, for my physical fitness business, why am I not doing these two, three, four steps? Because it's not that difficult to do. So I'm going to go here first, Aaron. Let's go. Unless you want to add something. I think. No, I, there's so many industries that this can work for. I don't even think it has to be exclusive to those. It's just taking a step back and going, what kind of information could I package? That to... usually becomes the sticking point for many. Is they're yep. like, I know I can do this, but what am I going to say? What am I going to offer? What am I going to do? I don't write. I don't have anything. I'm not like a content guy. Well, don't let, like stop all that and just like look at the actual strategy first. Don't sure. worry about like the tactical things. How will I do it? Where will I get my content from? Because I'm going to give you a great little hack here, which is how we did it. Can you see this? Okay, buddy. Let me get two things I want to remove here. I want to remove the logo. Get us out of the way. Look at those guys up top left. So this is a page that we call, this offers the two by three selling method. It's at two by three. So two X three selling method.com. So first and foremost, go to the page, sign in and get the report if you don't have it and take yourself through the process and take some notes, but we'll walk you through it here on the show. So this is a simple free report, how to effort, effortlessly double your sales overnight with one simple three-step tweak to your sales presentation, right? So if I go down here and scroll it, you can see here's the opt-in at the top. Some people, that's all they need to see. Oh man, that sounds great, I want it now, boom. So mechanically here, it's good to have that opt-in right away above the fold, because some people are real quick, give it to me, slam bam, I don't need to see any more. There it is, sign in, get it, done, delivered. Now you have an email address and the ability to follow up. But some people need a lot of info. They're like, well, this sounds good, but I need to see more and scroll. Who's this guy, Andrew? Little background on me, what I've been doing over the years. And then here's the biggie. And when you do a proper landing or lead capture page, you gotta be great with bullet points. When I did early copywriting, very early on Aaron, the first thing I learned was, when you're going to craft a lead generation offer, don't worry about anything else except the bullet points because the bullet points are the benefits and the features combined and they will drive the headline and the page structure and everything you're going to do later on. So I would, I always have the team and I work with a copywriting team on these. Let's really nail the bullet points. So I gave them a copy of the report and I had them write like 12 bullet points, right? How to overcome the biggest battle in business the three to one ratio you can't ignore, why you should stop doing webinars, the truth about selling with emotion, three questions to ask yourself before every single sales presentation, real life examples of the method in action, the one thing never mentioned in copywriting and sales training, and the one piece of sales tracking technology that we use that's head and shoulders above the rest and on and on and on and on and on. So really specific detailed features plus benefits because that's really what gets people to go, oh, I want this. Boom, download, loops them back up to the opt-in. Then it goes a little bit deeper, right? Talk about a couple testimonials, which is really important. Here's three people that read the report that had good things to say, social proof, third-party validation, and then your next steps, what to do next. Here's a rundown of what's going to happen. And when you sign in, we're going to send it to you. Put your best email in, download it here. It keeps looping them back to the top, and here we are. So it's really not a mysterious landing page. It's an information-based offer. We love education-based offers. I love leading with value in content that can really help someone right now. It's quick. It's not long. It's not drawn out. And then from there, you can move them to other things like maybe booking a strategy session with you, depending on your business model. Maybe it's you introduce them to another product on the next page that would that would be a good complement to this information report, right? So that's the framework of the front. And to your point earlier, Aaron, what that does is that allows you to build a big email list. And if you're not building an email list in your business, you're, that's an important missing link. 
because having a list is having an asset and it gives you the ability to follow up long-term, very long-term via email and text. You can see here, we actually have a mobile phone option because we want the ability to be able to communi communicate not only by email, but by text. And you'd be surprised, Aaron. Most people look at us and they go, oh, no one's ever gonna stick their mobile phone number in there. Do you know what the percentage of people are who give their mobile phone number, Aaron? I'm gonna have you take a guess. Um, when we do phone number optional, so, so here's, I'm going to walk through a couple different things. The psychology is right here, right, buddy? Right. When we only ask for email, we should get 40% of people to opt in if the page is designed correctly. When we add mobile phone optional, we will typically see that number drop from 40% to 20%. This page is actually converting at 35% plus and the reason I think why it's higher is because you did the subtle step of saying, we will text the report to you. Why are you going to give me? Why should I give you the phone yeah, number? Yeah, instead of well, just we'll text give me your phone you. number and I'm going to spam you, right? Right. No, we're going to text you the report. So I would say roughly of the total emails or the total contacts that we're creating here right now, I would say 60% of people are giving you the phone number. It's actually, it's, it's not that high. It's 30%. Or okay. giving the phone number, which is I think it's excellent. Sixty would it is excellent. Sixty would be like a grand slam. Um, Thirty percent giving the phone number, and by the way, the page is now converting at forty percent plus, even with this here. Last That's I looked, it, it was like thirty nine point seven eight or forty one point two, which is outstanding. And this page right here, again, if you're listening, it's at two by three selling method dot com. So two x three selling method dot com. I would go watch it because we're showing three steps of the process here. It's worth going to YouTube or going over this, uh, to the webpage to watch this. But that's a really, really big figure. I've not in a long time done that for either our own offers or for clients out of the gates, 35, 40. Oh yeah, when we're, when, no. we're, when we're setting a KPI goal inside the agency for an email and a phone number optional, we're setting at 20% is our goal. To come in at 40% on it right. is 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 a huge outcome to from a conversion standpoint. Yeah, so the tweaking usually happens right away. Oh, we're at 10%, we're at 15, yep. 20. What do we need to do to get to 30? And a lot of times, do we need to change the headline? Do we need to look at the bullet points? Graphic design makes a big difference. We have a fantastic graphic designer. I mean, Kevin's the best in the world, in my opinion. I've never, Aaron, I've never even seen a close second with our designer. So to put a really nice 3D cover like this here, also as a grabber, People gravitate to not only words, but graphic designs and visuals enhance the words. So words and visuals go together. There's a lot of psychology here. We talk about this a lot on the show. There's a lot of psychology involved in copywriting and design to get people to take the action you want them to take. So this has been a staggering performance out of the gates. It's also making sales, which I'll talk about in a minute. It's one thing to get leads. It's another to get leads and make sales simultaneously, which is ultimately the end goal. Get mm -hmm. people to schedule appointments sell something, buy something, whatever the case may be. So when we, when they sign in and you should funnel hack this, they're going to land on a page that looks like this. So this is the success page. Congrats. Your free copy has been sent to you. It's a digital guide and an audio report. Watch the video now to hear more about my secret weapon number two and a gift I have for you right below. So now they know what's going on. Okay. The report in the video, because we did a video and an audio. In fact, we did, a, we did an episode, Aaron and I, probably a year and a half ago on the two by three selling method. So what we did is we repurposed content. We took the podcast episode of the two by three selling method and we made that the audio version. And then we wrote the free report called the two by three selling method, which is here, that's the offer. So now they're getting it in two forms of media. Some people are readers, some people are listeners, all the same content bundled together. That's been emailed to them. But then I have a video here. It's probably about two minutes. And it says, hey, now that you have the report and you're going to have a really good strategy in closing more sales, here's the software that we use that powers the strategy and can give you an all-in-one solution to be able to manage, organize, and communicate and follow up with your leads in a full, complete manner with email, text, voice broadcast, all those great things. And that's Pipeline Pro, which is the software we own that powers this show. So what are we doing? The end result is we'd like to acquire more software customer users, but at the same time, we've given great value on the front. So it isn't like we're whipping this report together and saying, oh, get, hey, go get the report. And there's like no substance there and it's all fluff because we just want to get them over here. No, that report's really good. 
That report will help you completely change the game with the way you position your scripts, your webinars, your emails. There's a little formula in there that works amazing. We call it the two by three selling method because it can double your sales. That's the two. In three simple steps, that's the three. So the, you know, the fancy two by three is really double in three steps. So they can take the tour here and boom, it opens up to our sales page, right? Which is a offer to become a user and activate a lifetime license to Pipeline Pro. So now we've gotten leads. We're having a lot of people come in here and buy the software, activate a subscription to the, activate a license to the software, all while we've educated them on how to basically create a better sales script. And then the last piece here, Aaron, is this is what gets emailed to them. Obviously the content has to be delivered right here. And the content is the free report itself. It can be downloaded right here. When you open it up, there's a beautifully designed report. Again, design matters. I think this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 pages, really, really laid out well. Um, clean read, that's important. Readership and flow and design is important as well. And then down below, check it out. Here's an episode of the two by three selling method. Episode six, actually, Aaron, this thing goes back wow. to like the stone ages. <laughs> so episode six here is the two by three selling method. And then again, hey, a case one more time. Hey, listen, in case you missed that sales pipeline management tool we use, here it is again, take the tour right here because that's the link they get in the email. And two things going on here, really important, is this is generating a lot of great quality leads. And this is making a lot of software sales on the back end for us. So I would suggest you funnel hack it, go through it. And the only thing you want to ask yourself is what is it, what kind of free report or video or audio could I put out there for someone, right? And where would that back them into? I think for most businesses, it's a situation where it backs them into maybe a strategy session or it backs them into um, maybe a sale of a product, a, a class, a course, right? There's just so many ways you can do this when you lead with information that's valuable and you're giving great value on the front. The door opens and the guard goes down for you to be able to sell something else or move somebody to a strategy session or an appointment of some kind on the back. Very few take the time to do this on the front, Aaron. They want to just jump right to the sales process. Well, and the the jumping to the sales process is fine if you've got an absolutely irresistible offer, but you have to also think short-term versus long-term. Building the asset that we're building with this particular offer is we're building an email and SMS database that we wouldn't have otherwise had access to. And so we're giving ourselves an opportunity to educate and nurture that list over a longer timeline because the reality is, is that not everybody who sees your thing wants to buy your thing on day one. In fact, only about 5% of people mm -hmm. want to buy your thing on day one. So if you can create some type of flow like this where you can get them into your ecosystem and nurture them, it gives you the opportunity to tap into the other 95% of your potential customers that you wouldn't have otherwise had access to. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a longer term play to add into what you might already have in place. Right. Exactly right. So there's, there's work involved, right? There's, let's talk about what's involved, right? There's copywriting. You got to get those words right. At the end of the day, the words, and I'll give you the steps that we take when we do things like this and create funnels like this and create lead generation offers like this. To me, it's always about the words first. The words have to work. The words have to be compelling. They have to be benefit driven. They have to be really specific. Hey, what am I gonna get? I have a lot of emails and I sign into a lot of things. Why am I gonna give you my attention in my inbox? That's the question that's being asked because this is not an easy game today. When Aaron and I got started online and you know, 19, none of your business. It was like, there were like, there were like two people marketing these things online. There was like one search engine. There was no video, social media. It was like, if you had this free report that you were able to somehow get a website around in like 2000, you were like, you were like a genius. It was like, man, how are they doing that? I can, you mean I can sign in and have this report emailed to me? That's like magic. That's like, that happens like 10 times. That happens like 10 times an hour for people today, right? So you have to be really good to acquire an email today, more so than ever because of the competition that we're up against with a really 
really populated inbox these days, right? When we, when we started this, we could have sold this book for $79 and probably would have cost us 20 bucks to make the sale. We'd have been making $50 profit just selling it in the front. But it goes to show you as the, as the uh, attention span of clients and the advent of more information has come into play, you've got to give more to get more. Yeah, in, in this current economy. You got to do way more. You got to do way more. We'll include the link down below, two by three selling method in the show notes, by the way. Um, here's a hack though. So now I, I always know where, where, where most are thinking, okay, I could get all that done, but I don't know what I would write. Could I, I don't have a report. I don't have content. I don't do this. I, well, here's a little hack. The entire two by three selling method, Aaron, you might not even know this, is the bonus chapter in my best-selling book, Sales Velocity. So I took the bonus chapter, the two by three selling method out of the book and we just re-ramped it into a 18 page free report. And of course I added some of my own flair to it and we um, enhanced it graphically and whatnot. So, so I didn't recreate any content because I had already created that content, God, 2016 or 17, whenever that book came out. We just grabbed content we already have. So if you're an author, you have a leg up because if you're an author, you've already created content. If you do a show, if you do a podcast, you also have a leg up because you have so much audio content that could be transcribed, repurposed, redesigned in a new free report or a new concept or a new demo can be created around it as well. So most likely you have the content floating around there, out there somewhere. It could be sitting on your computer. It could be in a book that you did a gazillion years ago. It could be on a podcast episode. You might have been interviewed by someone and you feel like you killed it, but where is that content? Maybe somebody can transcribe that and then edit it, and then that can become the free report. But most of the time, you have something that is of huge value that you don't realize it is, that you could repurpose, recreate into a lead generation offer, and maybe have a result like this, 200 plus leads in the first seven days. I mean, that's, that's, and that's just scratching the surface on a few hundred dollars a day ad spend. That's, that's not us. We're usually into the few thousands of dollars a day in ad spend when we get an offer moving minimum. Yeah. When I, when I, when we talk about those numbers though, it, it often just people tune out because they can't even wrap their head around it. I think the really important thing to zone in on here is when was the last time you generated 20 new leads in a week without you having to be physically active out there networking doing whatever you know think about how much your business would change if you just knew that predictably five leads a week 20 leads a week in this case 200 leads a week were coming into your ecosystem how much easier would it make it for you to plan and when i say plan plan your advertising budget plan your sales team expansion you know, strategy, plan your product rollouts. When you're in lead poverty, it's very difficult to plan for your business. When you're in lead abundance, it's very easy to plan, to test, to launch, you know, and, and so when you look at this and you say, well, this looks like a lot of work. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work for maybe a couple of weeks, but how would your business change if all of a sudden you had that predictable lead flow coming in every day? I look at this like an oil well. Right. So if you have a couple oil wells like this that gush leads in cash, right? That's a good way of looking at it. These are little marketing assets that can literally work for years to come when you get it right. So it's worth having these little marketing assets or oil wells in your business because now you start having what's called lead diversification. So now we have leads coming in from a different source, a different style, information versus a direct to consumer offer different forms of media. This might work really good on Facebook, but it might not work really good on YouTube, right? So now you actually have the ability to take it to different forms of media. This could kill it on radio, Aaron. Do you ever hear on, I don't know if you do anything with radio. Most people don't today, Aaron, but anytime I'm driving, I tend to listen to like CNBC or Fox mm -hmm. Business News. Those are my, my two channels. And I always hear information offers on the commercials. The commercials being like, you know, hey, um, go to the website to get the 10 retirement tips you, you, you got to have so you, you don't run out of money in retirement. Or I hear the sales ones. If you want to triple the results of your sales team, you know, go over to makemoresales.com or give us a call toll free and give us your email address and we're going to send it out to you right away. And they, I've heard, I, listen, I've been hearing them for years. So if I've been hearing them for years on radio, seeing them for years on CNBC, 
they're most likely working because you're not going to keep running an offer that's no. not funny, right? If, it, if so, it's consistent, it's working. Yeah. So when you have an asset like this, this is important. You now have options, TV, radio, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. There is literally a dozen opportunities that you could deploy this in right away and have leads coming in from multiple different sources. So that's the good thing about getting it done. The other good thing is that most of your competitors would never take the time to do this. So that also now starts to put you in a different light when it comes to not having as much competition, right? Getting these things to market is very difficult. Um, good news for you if you're watching this going, oh my God, I want that. Now, if you're a Pipeline Pro member, if you're a user in our ecosystem, we have an entire team led by me, by the way. I, I oversee all the consulting. We have a, a, a very high-end client group in which we build exactly this for you and your business, just like you see here. And we even put the Pipeline Pro technology behind it. And we even write the advertising for you in a three-step process that normally takes us about eight weeks. And the clients that go through that are absolutely thrilled, ecstatic. Some of them have never generated a lead online before. And now they're generating leads every single week because they have the infrastructure that you see right here in place, and it works from front to back to middle, and they can duplicate it and multiply it and duplicate it and multiply it because once you get that one oil well built, the second and the third one is really kind of easy. And, and I think I really want to tie a, a bow on this today if you think it's a good point to end on, Andrew. There's a lot of people who are in, they're confused, they're in lead poverty, they're scrambling. And, and when they see an idea like this, they get excited, but they go, well, how is it going to really impact my business? And we talked a little bit about the ability to plan and be predictable and so forth. But I always think sharing real life examples with people really help things sink home, right? So you and I are, we, we have Pipeline Pro together. You also have a consulting business on the side. I also am the CEO of an agency, a marketing agency on the side. We, they all work together, right? We, we create different things to, to support other things. And I had a, I met with a prospect this morning. Um, I will tell you off air what it is. You'll know them immediately because they're a huge health and fitness company. Um, started three years ago, now doing $12 million a year in revenue. I'd love to hear about it. Um, and they came to me because my lead generation systems are so deep. I have constant referrals and lead generation and, and people coming to talk to me about my services. So we went through this guy's business and I told him what we would do, what it would cost. It's not a small retainer, $25,000, $30,000 a month. Most people would be ecstatic to land a retainer like that. And the guy said, send me a proposal. I'm good to go. And I said, well, I'm, I'm excited that, that you're good to go. We have a wait list. You're not going to be able to get in for three to four weeks. The guy's face was like, what are you talking about? I am willing to sign a deal today and give you this amount of money. And you're telling me that I have to wait. Yes, you do because there's a wait list and think about how different your confidence level and the positioning of your business would be if you were so full that you were literally cherry picking who you got to what you get to work with, with zero fear of loss and zero fear of money and profits because your pipeline is so full that you literally have to pick and choose who you work with versus wonder where the next meal is going to come from in your business. That's what that brings to you is that certainty, that confidence, that positioning. And it's a great place to be in. It's a great place to know I can send them a proposal today and pick up a $500,000 a year client or I cannot. It doesn't matter because my lead generation systems are so predictable. And the takeaway there is that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't so, happen overnight so and you, it certainly doesn't happen with, uh, without things like this in place that we've covered today. Right, right. It certainly doesn't happen. So that's why shows like this concepts like this, really doing a detailed, specific deep dive of things like this. This is one of those, go back and watch it twice and go, okay, I just got that whole thing in 45 minutes conceptually, verbally. I heard it. Audio was great. Now it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go back now and I'm going to 
hit the pause button seven or eight times and write down a note or two of how can I take what they just said and apply it to my business? How can I now go take that strategy and apply it to my business? Go make a list, right? You, this doesn't start off with a, a, a Word doc and you're going to go write copy. This starts off with what's the big picture business plan here? What is the plan for this lead generation offer? So when we did it, I laid out the plan. What do I want this to look like from top to bottom? Where's the content going to come from? Will it be a, a free report plus an audio, just a free report? Does the report have to get written? What do we want that hook to be, right? This kind of double your sales in three simple steps tweak. I wanted it to be fast and not feel like it was a whole course they had to get through. So really they could learn this in 10 minutes and go tweak their scripts right away and make a huge impact. So you want to like lay out all that on a one page Google doc, Word doc, whatever. And then it's just like, you'd be surprised when you put pen to paper and you start creating a little table of contents and a process around it, how quick things start to pop in your head and how quick it comes together. Then you say, okay, who am I going to work with to get this done? Can I do it myself? Can I do it with my internal team? Or is this, some, or is this a situation where I need to go hire someone to do it? But when you get it all on paper, I call it a brain dump. When we work with clients and we do intake calls, it's, it's a brain dump. Let's get it all out on paper. Let's take a look at it. Let's figure out what has to happen. Do we need to outsource? Do we not? And then it's like, okay, I got this thing on paper now. I sort of got it out of my head. It's liberating. I feel better. I dumped it. And then things start to move. You'd be, you'd be surprised once you do what I just said, how quick things begin to move into motion. And that's what I would recommend is, is get it on paper. What is my plan here? What is my strategy? What are the steps that, that need, to, need to happen to get this off the ground? Uh, it, once you get this conceptually and you start to put it into play in your business, one, you'll wonder what the hell you've been doing for the last 10 years. <laughs> and number two, it will really open your eyes to how easy it is to scale once you have things like this in place. That's right. That's right. Again, these are marketing assets that give you control to be able to go to multiple forms of media and test and deploy. If you don't have something like this, you can't go to media and say, hey, I'm ready to advertise. They, they, you have to have a sales funnel flow. You have to have a really well thought out lead generation offer that's gonna be compelling to their, to their listeners or readers. They actually won't approve things in a lot of cases that, that is sloppy or not compelling or not compliant. Frankly, in the big networks, Aaron, we dealt with this many times. Facebook and Instagram are really compliant. TV is super compliant. They'll turn stuff away all the time. Radio needs things to, 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 to be congruent with their audience. I mean, w when you get this right, you, you, you have such an in that most don't have. And it's really worth your time um, and really worth, the, worth the, the, the effort to go through to get this right. Agreed. So I'm going to wrap it there. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you jumped in late, we did a nice little dissection of Tom Brady's second retirement. We dissected Aaron's bodily metamorphosis. And naturally, we dissected the offer that for us, right out of the gates with no tweaking, got 200 leads in less than seven days. And um, God only knows where it goes from there. I mean, that's one hell of a foundation. So it's, it's here. It's yours to look at. Tweak, funnel hack, two by three, sellingmethod.com. Link is in the show notes. And we'll see you on the next episode. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. And this one, folks, is a wrap. We will see you soon. See you soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.